ain't as sick as all that. You get back into your bed and stay there. All right, I'll do it if you just calm down. I'm calm, now you do as I tell you. <laughs> You're a sick man. You're deathly sick. All right, all right. <laughs> Hurry, Ellie, come quick. Uncle Jed's sick. Oh, come in. What you want to do with that? Get them varmints and them critters out of here. Don't you know your pa is sick? Yes, ma'am, Granny. But don't worry, they won't catch nothing. <laughs> Get him out of here. Get him out. Guess who? You go get me a mud gobbler's nest. Some rich weed, some dog bangs, some stump water, some dried uh, beetles, and some lizard eggs. I got doctoring to do. I ain't never known Paul to be sick before. That man's never ailed a day in his life. What you reckon it is? City living, that's what it is. There ain't enough outdoors for a mountain man like Jed. They keep filling it up with buildings. First thing you know, all the outdoors is going to be indoors. <laughs> Granny! <laughs> what in time nation? I couldn't find no stump water, Granny. So I dug this up. Now you can make your own. <laughs> Don't you know that stump water has got to sit in the stump to green up 30 to 40 days in order to get any power? <laughs> now, give Ellie the retchweed and get this mess out of here. I couldn't find no retchweed. Or dog bay neither. Couldn't find no lizard eggs, nor dried beetle. How can you be a doctor in Beverly Hills without the proper medicine? <laughs> what do we do? How are we gonna get Paul well? Well, I'll have to make do with some old-fashioned remedies. Now, you go up and sit with your paw, and let me know if he goes to sinking. Yes, Uncle Granny. Well, what do you want me to do? Get this stump out of here, and don't make any noise. Don't you know that your Uncle Jed is at death's door? Blow it. Got him, Duke. Nice big fat honker flying south. Blow it. Got us another one. We gonna have goose and dumplings tonight. Paul? Just a minute, Ellie. <laughs> Come in. I mean, uh, come in. Paul? Oh, I'm terrible worried. You ain't never been sick before. Oh, don't you worry, Ellie. Ain't nobody better at doctoring than Granny. But, Paul, Granny can't find the proper medicine. And you might think of way and pass before she can save you. No, no, Granny will pull me through. <laughs> I'm scared for you, Paul. Oh, now, Ellie, don't go to crying. Look, if you can keep a secret, I'll tell you the truth. I ain't really sick. I'm just pretending for your Granny's sake. What you mean? Well, remember back home, how folks was always coming over to our place to let Granny doctor him? Yeah. Remember how happy it made Granny? Yeah, especially if one of them got better. Yeah, right. The folks out here got city doctors, and they don't need Granny. And she misses it something terrible. You reckon that's why she's been so down in the mouth here lately? Of course. You should have seen her when I told her I was ailing. Why she commenced to bouncing and jumping around, worrying about me being at death's door. I ain't seen her so happy in a year. Hold on, Jed. I'm a-coming. <laughs> Hurry with my medicine, death row. <laughs> I don't want to worry you, but you're an awful sick man. Granny. Shh. Save your strength. You're wrinkling awful fast. <laughs> Granny, your specs is all steamed up. That's due. <laughs> well, get him off the bed. Jed, I don't want to worry you. But you're an awful sick man. I know, Granny. But anybody can save me, it's you. That's the truth. Ain't nobody can doctor like you. It ain't no credit to me. I was born with the gift. Where's your medicine, Granny? Hey, Uncle Jed. You don't look sick to me. Hey, come on, let you and me go hunting. Come on. <laughs> hey, look at you. 
You see, Granny, he's dressed to go on now. I'm ashamed of you. Now, Granny, I... Don't you know that every mountain man wants to go to his reward with his boots on and his gun at his side? <laughs> now, cover him up. Not all the way. He ain't gone yet. <laughs> I ain't gonna let you go, Jed. Thank you, Granny. Let's get busy. Jethro, get my medical tray and set it on the bed. Yes, Granny. Ellie Mae, shut the door and the windows. We gotta trap them city germs that's in here and commence to fighting them. Yes, Granny. Jethro, drop this in my boiling water and get my vapors to fusillate them. <laughs> this is a make-do remedy, Jed. Because Jethro couldn't get me any stump water, dog bane, or lizard eggs. Uh, what is it you're fixing to give me, Granny? Brand new, kid. It's in the trying out stages. <laughs> <laughs> Who have you tried it out on? Well, no human beings yet. But I did give it to that big black bear that used to come around the old cabin, honey stealing all the time. <laughs> By doggies. I believe that's his hide hanging there. <laughs> Here, Ellie, light the fumigating candles. Jethro, start a fire and throw some of that skunk weed on it. I'll put them germs down with my putting down powder. Nothing can live through this, Jed. I believe you, Granny. <laughs> Boy, Granny, you sure are giving them city germs what for. Betwixt the fusillating vapors, fumigating candles, and putting down powders, them germs just gotta give up. I'm gonna save that poor, sick, miserable, frail old man, or my name ain't Doctor. Granny! Granny! You get back to bed, you poor, sick, miserable, frail old man. Granny, I can't breathe. That's why I'm doctoring you, you darn fool. <laughs> Will you listen for a minute? You get back to bed. Don't you know that you're a death dog? <laughs> don't hurt him, Granny. I'll take a club to him if he don't lay down like I tell him to. Go fetch my shoes. <laughs> Taking my morning constitutional. You are? Yes. It's got me in the best shape since my army days. I feel that. <laughs> and they say bankers are soft, eh? Well, you sure are nice and soft. <laughs> Maybe by mountain standards, I'm no Tarzan. But I assure you, my Beverly Hills physician is going to be amazed when he examines me this morning. How come? Because of my condition. <laughs> you know, every... Every morning, I walk all the way from my front door across your lawn and over to that bird bath. Why? Ain't you got no place to wash up? <laughs> How's your father? Well, right now, he's trying to get Granny cheered up. She's been missing the hills back home something awful. Oh, what's the matter? Is something wrong? Well, you see, back home, folks was always coming to Granny for doctrine. Nothing pleasures her like telling folks what ails them and what to do about it. Well, I'll do my bit. Granny, Mr. Drysdale wants to talk to you. Yes, Granny, I need your advice and your help. He's ailing, Granny, feeling right poorly. Stick out your tongue. <laughs> it's them city germs. Yes, I agree. Now, can you help me? I'm probably the only one who can. Yes, so Get him up to the sick room and see that he gets to bed right away. No, no, I, I don't have time for that. Just a little poultice or something I can take with me to the office. Get him up to bed, Jethro. No, 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 really, it, it's not that serious. Besides, I have an examination at 10 o'clock. You get examined when I get around to you. Now get him up to bed, Jethro. And yes, then you go find me some stump water. Wait, stop. <laughs> I haven't got time for this. I've got to get down. You leave patience. No stump water. It ain't easy being a doctor in Beverly Hills. Uh-huh. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Drysdale. I'll try there. She thinks you may have stopped at the Clampets next door. You're going to be amazed when you examine the chief. I am? He's in splendid physical condition. Been walking every morning. To the bank. Now, it's the neighbor's bird bath. But it's a nice little jaunt. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Most bankers are soft as marshmallows. Till you try to borrow money from them. Oh, hello, Granny. Hello, Mr. Drysdale. 
Granny. Jane Hathaway here. Is Mr. Drysdale there? May I... What? Sick in bed? <laughs> At your house? Well, I'll send his doctor right over. What's that? I said he's already got the best doctor in Beverly Hills. Now, excuse me, I'm too busy to talk. <laughs> she says he already has the best doctor in Beverly Hills? I'd better get over there right away. <laughs> best doctor in Beverly Hills? How can there be two of us? Pa? Me? Ellen? Come in. Mr. Drysdale. <laughs> what are you doing up here? A funny thing happened to me on my way to the bird bath. <laughs> Granny, be up here directly to give you some more medicine. Oh, no, not me. I I'm getting out of here. Tell me, leave the room. <laughs> what? What did Jeff do with my clothes? I only gave them to Granny to have them fumigated. Well, clothes or no clothes, I am leaving. <laughs> you ain't got no chance of getting down them steps. Granny watches them like a hawk. Let's go take a look out the window. <laughs> Well, it's pretty far to jump. Well, maybe you can make a limb of that tree yonder. Well, I'm in pretty good shape, but not that good. Shut that window! <laughs> I just had these germs put down. Now you open the window and let them in again. Well, Granny, uh, Mr. Drysdale feels pretty good. I think maybe he's well. You get back to bed. Oh, no, no, no. He's, he's right, Granny. I, I feel wonderful. Perfectly marvelous. Of course you do. I've been doctoring you. Oh, and you're <laughs> sensational. You know, you've made me well. I had you well. <laughs> then you opened that window and breathed in some more germs. Oh, no, I didn't. Honest, honest. I opened the window, but, but I didn't breathe. <laughs> oh, I swear it. I held my breath, didn't I, Mr. Pappin? <laughs> Granny, I swear I ain't actually seen him take a breath in five or ten minutes. Lung rock. Huh? That got him breathing, but he's still wheezing and all. You get in the bed. Get into bed. I've got to get to the bank. You've got to get into bed. No, really, I can't. I can't know that your life is hanging by a thread. Get into bed. Turn fool and lie down. This calls for a different kind of medicine. I'm going down to the kitchen and swamp it up. Neither one of you get a foot out of that bed, you hear me? You just lay there and listen to that music. <laughs> and be glad it ain't harps you're hearing. Well, howdy there. I know somebody was coming the minute I heard that music. Is this the Clampett residence? Oh, yes, sir. I'd like to see the doctor that's taking care of Mr. Drysdale. Oh, yes, sir. Come right in. Hey, Granny, word's getting around. Here's another one. <laughs> Howdy. How do you do? Well, I see you got your things with you. You feeling on staying for a while? As long as necessary. Please be. Here's one that understands a great doctrine takes a little time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, what do you reckon the problem is? Well, I won't know until I've had a consultation and my own examination is completed. We're going to get along just fine. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'll be taken to the sick room. Oh, did you hear that, Jethro? Ain't he a joy? He sure is, Granny. <laughs> you make doctoring a real pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Now, take him up to the sick room, Jethro. I got work to do in the kitchen. I'll be up to see you directly. Oh, now, you won't have to climb these stairs again. I'll come out to the kitchen and see you there. Lord love you. You're so nice. You about got me to ball. <laughs> But don't you worry. If great doctrine can do it, we'll come through as good as new. Thank you. Thank you. What a lovely little woman. She sure is. Hey, this way to the sick room. Hey, what you got in that there little bag? Everything I'll need, I'm sure. Well, that's good, because we're running low on night shirt. <laughs> Snake pork. <laughs> Turpentine. <laughs> Pope berries. Water. 
Sure. Ain't got none, Granny. Corn squeezing. <laughs> You know that last patient that was so nice? Yeah. Well, he weren't so nice when I asked him to take off his clothes. Why? What happened? Well, he commenced to bucking like a steer. Kept yelling for the doctor. But I knowed you was busy, so I just put him to bed and locked the door. Hey, just so. Let's hurry, Ellie. I gotta pull them three back from the brink of the grave. Lizard eggs. I ain't got none, Granny. I forgot. Well, give me some gunpowder. Sometimes that works just as good. <laughs> Careful. Three ailing is enough. <laughs> Either one of you fellas know any funny stories? <laughs> well, the good doctor there usually regales his patients with a few of the ladies. How about it, Doc? All right. Have you heard the one about the busy doctor who made a house call? Was seized, forcibly undressed, and thrown into bed? No, what happened? <laughs> well, his patient was a rich banker. So this busy doctor doubled his fee. And if he has to stay locked up here much longer, he's going to triple it. I didn't ask you to come here. But if you're going to charge me, then by George, you're going to examine me. So get your bag of Tinker Toys and get at it. Show a little more respect for the dignity of the medical profession, shall we? Hey, what's this, a rubber hammer? Yes. Well, I see where it'd be nice and quiet, but I don't see how you'd drive any nails with it. <laughs> I don't use it for nails. Oh, good. What's that thing? This is a stethoscope. With it, I can listen to the patient's heart and lungs. Like this. Ooh, that's cold. <laughs> what do you say? I say that's cold. Did the doctor treat him? Oh, yeah. But there's terrible trouble, Miss Jane. That last batch of medicine blew up and pretty near ruined the whole kitchen. <laughs> medicine blew up? Well, yeah. A granny said it was mixing the corn squeezings and the gunpowder that did it. <laughs> yeah, bro, would you please explain what you are talking about? I haven't got time now, Miss Jane. There's three sick men lying upstairs in bed, and I gotta get these things sharpened so's granny can go to cutting on them. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? Well, yeah. Without we got no medicine, this is the only thing that'll save them. <laughs> Hard to be calm, huh? Is Mr. Drysdale one of the men that Granny's going to cut on? Yeah. Mr. Drysdale, Uncle Jed, and the fellow that came last by the name of Clydeburn. The doctor. Yeah. You'll have to wait your turn. I gotta get upstairs and commit slacking on those three men that I got up there. Bring my tools. To no, Granny, I do not let you do it. Now, I've had enough fighting with newly patients, more than I can take today. Now, Ellie Mae, you get her out of the way and keep her out. Sorry, Miss Jane. You come with me. I don't think Jed will put up a scrap, but them other two might have to be helped down. Granny, please come back. I beg of you. I'll get to you later. I've only got two hands. <laughs> Ellie Mae, we have got to prevent Granny from operating. She ain't gonna operate, Miss Jane. She's just gonna whack off some of their hair and fingernails. Hair and fingernails? And she'll dig three little holes in the ground, bury it, say some magic words, and that throws a spell on their sickness. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Say, hey, doctor, I bet you he could talk a heap better if you took that stick out of his mouth. Lock it, Jethro. Get back in bed. You heard her. 
Get back in bed. Get this junk off of the bed. I got doctoring to do. Now, look here. Yeah, right. Get that junk off of there. Those are the finest medical instruments that money can buy. Thank you. Razor sharp, too. All right, Mr. Geisel, I'll commence on you. No, no, no just a minute. What, what do you have in mind with that knife and those scissors? Well, I got to cure you somehow. And without medicine, there's only one way left. Oh, no. Uh, not me. My name's Jeff Rowe. <laughs> Madam, I can get you any medicine you require simply by telephoning a pharmacy. You can? And they will deliver to your front door. Oh, that's just dandy. I'd much rather use medicine. It's a lot easier than cutting and snipping. Exactly what I keep telling my surgeon friends. <laughs> now, it will just lead me to a telephone? Right this way. Uh, Charlie's Pharmacy? Petey? Yeah, yeah, it's me. And look, I'm going to put this lady on. She'll tell you all the medicine she needs. I want you to give her A1 service. That a boy. Right. I'll go reassure Mr. Drysdale. He seemed a little panicked. <laughs> Hello? You got a pencil to mark this down with? All right. Now, I want a quart of good, raunchy stuff water. The kind that's been aged in the wood stuff. It's been sitting there from 30 to 40 days, and it's nice and green. Wait a minute. That ain't all. I want a heaping cup full of lizard eggs, a double handful of dog bane, and a couple of dozen of dried beetles. And I want a mud dauber's nest. And I mean a big one. Don't send me over one of them little two holders. Everything all right? Who wants to talk to you? Yeah, Petey. Now, look, I don't care what she ordered. You get it over here fast. No, this is no gag. Now, look, you pride yourself on having the finest supply of pharmaceutical... Hello? Hello? <laughs> yeah, no. Well, I'll call another pharmacy. Oh, that won't do no good. You just can't buy proper medicine here in Beverly Hills. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, Granny? I'm gonna have to go to cutting and snipping on those three sick ones. Oh, not me. I'm getting out of here. Get him, Jethro. <laughs> Ellie Mae! Yes, I'm Granny. Dig me three deep holes out and back. Right away, Granny. <laughs> done some doctoring in your time, but today beats all. You took a heap out of me, Jed. Especially clipping and burying all that hair and throwing my spell. But I reckon it was worth it. Yonder comes the living proof. How do you feel, boys? Fine, doctor. Oh, just fine. Come back and see me anytime you need me. Yes, we will. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. You did take considerable hair off them, Granny. Had to. Their nails were so short. Well, it's a small price to pay for good hair. to you. The Beverly Hillbillies has been presented by Kellogg's Corn Flakes. From Kellogg's of Battle Creek.